Hey everybody, welcome to Lesser States of Discord. At our new time, potentially, I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Jables. personally fine with this. Yeah. Yeah, a nice, chill Sunday afternoon brunch time. Yeah, my wife was complaining sure. a little bit because it's right in the middle of stuff. Yeah, it's right in the middle of our son's nap. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, is that why you were? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had he he decided to stay up late today, so I had to put him down late. Yeah. Perfect. Anyways, how was your guys' week? It's been a week. I won a pelvic thrust contest. Classy. <laughs> Uh, did you guys see what was going on with the whole Twitch TOS debacle? Yeah. Oh yeah, now they've <laughs> they've basically let uh, Project Melody on onto Twitch. What? What's well, Project Melody? no, not literally, you, not literally. You don't know what Project Melody is? I don't remember. I've heard it before. <laughs> It was the VTuber who was doing porn. Oh. She actually kind of predates a lot of VTubers. Yeah. Wasn't the first VTuber, but uh, you'd be you, you'd be forgiven for mistaking her as such. Yeah. Yeah, I remember remember the controversy of her back in the day, where a bunch of actual thoughts were pissed off that like the virtual girl was getting more attention than them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, well, Twitch already walked it back like 24 hours. Oh later, yeah, they, they walked that <laughs> shit back. That's Cause... about the, the quickest retraction that you're likely to ever see on anything. Well, they did the stupidest thing. Let Let's put in a, a line in our TOS. Like the rest of the bit, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. You know, whatever. And then th just that one little line of fictional characters can show exposed breasts and genitals and whatever. Basically, uh, it was an attempt to to okay doing like like figure art, you know. Figure like art, nude figure just... art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I'm doing artistry. Yeah, doing yeah. Like perfectly legitimate. Perfectly reasonable. The goal made sense. Your yeah. execution of it was dumb. <laughs> You don't give, you don't give degenerates that kind of freedom. <laughs> you, you don't <laughs> give degenerates a chance to rules lawyer. Yeah. The thing is, yeah. You know, like, there's a lot of artists that use Twitch to like dream their art, and there's a lot yeah. of things where they're just like, yeah, there's just, there's just good chunks of my output that you guys can't see me do because. Oh, hey, there's a dick. Yeah, or, you know, there's some tits. It, which is totally reasonable, but... You gotta... Yeah, you have to throw some context to disclaimers if you're gonna let people do that. That's... That's it. Because the speed at which people took the fuck advantage of that Holy oh, the, the the entire arts category was just porn. <laughs> That's it. Just people drawing porn. Yeah. Yep. Talk and about not of, thinking things a, through. A <laughs> bunch of titty a, streamers are just like, oh, I could I could use this as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. They well, still need to those, solve that. A bunch of those art streamers got banned too because they didn't clear things up with the trust and safety team that handles bans and suspensions before they made that announcement they didn't like have an internal memo yeah so this is what yeah. happens when people don't talk to each other before implementing things yeah just send out a memo 
This is why company again, meetings are actually important in corporate. Well, this once again <clears> just <throat> proves what people have been saying for years, that the leadership at Twitch is a bunch of old fucks that have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Because it's like, no one stopped and thought about this. They had all the best intentions. They just needed to run it by one actual streamer. <laughs> That's all, that's all they needed to do. Yeah, you know, it's like um, it's, it's like the old like so um, much. It's like the old marketing department joke that like every marketing department needs like a fourteen year old boy, and you have to mm-hmm. run everything by him. And if he laughs, start over. Yeah, because <laughs> otherwise your logo looks like a dick. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it happens so often. Just. Hire a fourteen year old boy. Like, hey, what do you think about this? One of my favorite ones That's dumb. <laughs> was like um somebody on like I believe it was on Twitter, like they did a post related to like um a sale on fireworks for like an upcoming fourth of July sale or something. Mm-hmm. And one of the promotional images they showed was the challenger exploding. Oh jeez! <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> Oof! Rough move. Oh man! Bold move, like, Cotton. Let's gonna, see if it pays off. I'm just gonna chalk that up to a younger person in the department who has no idea the context behind that. Yeah, they just were like, "Oh, cool explosion." Yeah. Yeah, you need a blend. We're not ageist around here. You need a blend of ages to understand things. Yeah. You need the young people to run stuff by the way, if they laugh, start over, and then you need some people who have been around for a little bit, maybe know a bit about history. They're just like, Oh, uh no, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Mar- uh, you know, marketing departments are the ones that need to be absolutely diverse. Of course diversity needs to be Yeah. <laughs> Because context, context matters a lot. Oh, I, I've seen some marketing campaigns where, like, they'll use some phrasing that in some cultures are like, what the fuck did you just say? Oh, my God. It's a, I don't have any examples off the top of my head, but it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like all the male tears cups. Yeah. Yeah. That means. Yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's just like, you know, you can never solely rely on the best of intentions. Mm-hmm. But on the plus side, with Twitch's new guidelines, you can play M rated games, and if a titty happens to happen then uh, you're not going to get banned for it. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of people who are like, I'd love to play The Witcher for you guys, but, well, you know. Yeah. And, and then you also they... have these... T- <laughs> you, you've also got these titty streamers that fucking... Oh, I'm not showing anything. I'm just obviously topless. Yeah, there was a lot of that before Twitch, just like, we've made a terrible mistake. Well, that was before <laughs> Twitch's new guideline. That was before they made the new guidelines. But, uh, yeah, but that's another thing that they need to deal with. But there was a brief window when those guidelines went live where it's just like, eh, yeah, there's just chicks with their tits out everywhere. Oh, they did. They did. Artistic nudity and all. What's weird is they did have the foresight with the video games to add in a few caveats. Like, it can't be modded to have tits. And uh, the game can't, like, the, the core of the game can't be about sex. So no leisure sh- suit, Larry. Yeah. Yeah, no adults-only games, but... 
Uh, what's that big titty volleyball game? Was that are alive. Um, that are beach alive. Volleyball? Extreme beach volleyball. Yeah, you can they play made that now. three of those. <laughs> yeah, They're but you could always fun. play that. That they, they weren't. Uh, they weren't naked. They were just big tittied. Mm -hmm. I mean, like these are all girls from a fighting game series that is notorious for having a physics engine specifically for the female character's breast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. So that they bounce. That. So they bounce around and jiggle and actually completely absurd, non-natural ways. Hmm. I'm cool with it's like, it. Yeah, boob, it's hilarious. Boobs move around. Like boobs will move around if you're getting suplexed or something, but not like that. <laughs> the jump. Five minutes later, the jiggle is still going. Yep. <laughs> they didn't like, wait five minutes. You, because you, you get these hit within three seconds. These are games made by a Japanese developer. So... You know. I feel no remorse. <laughs> One of the most yeah. sexually repressed cultures on the planet, just saying. Yeah. That's why they have so much art about it. Mm-hmm. And even in the art, they have to censor it or else it can't be sold. Well, that's why tentacles came around. Yep. <laughs> Although that goes back a lot further. Yeah. Oh boy, we just had a, a power fluctuation here. Oh no. We're good for now. I've got battery backup. If it comes down to it, I'll swap over to my big battery bank and I've got a generator. But, oh, we just had another one. <laughs> Fun. That has to be your favorite part about living where you live. Seems to happen a lot. It, it, it happens more, mostly in the winter. And it's because they've got this shit on... Well, keep in mind, I've got PG&E as my power company. And they have a... We'll just say reputation at this point. Because uh, they have been the cause of two... At least two fires that have cost lives. Oh, jeez. Because... Yeah. They went 40 years without proper maintenance on some of their uh, equipment and so that equipment failed same company then proceeded to try and file bankruptcy to get away from the lawsuits that were levied at them Ooh, it sounds like the company that does a uh, cost benefit analysis would it be more expensive oh, okay. to update everything, or would it be more expensive to face lawsuits? It, it's not that. What what What's the that? issue they didn't was even face was the lawsuits are like, oh fuck, um, our shit ended up getting people killed. Well, fuck them. We're not paying for that bankruptcy protection, please. Well, here here's the worst part. They were they they had a reputation as being very attentive very good and for 40 years they maintain they they banked on that um that reputation there were certain things that like it wasn't all at once but they started not maintaining stuff about f i think it's 40 or, fi or, or it, f 50 or 60 years ago at this point they stopped maintaining certain things and it just expanded and uh like Five, ten years ago, they did an audit and found at least one of their pieces of equipment that was out there had not been maintained for at least 40 years. And it was a... It was like a hook for something that the cable had worn so through it that it was like 90% worn through. Yes, specifically one of the major fires 
that's directly attributed to them was the campfire. Mm hmm. Which, you know, despite its kind of cutesy name, is one of the absolute worst wildfires in California state history. The, one of their fires wiped out an entire town. It no longer exists. Yeah, it's gone. The people survived, but the town is gone. Some of the people survived. Yeah. Others not did. Yeah, not all. Because the evacuation didn't go according to plan. The fire moved a lot quicker than the fire services predicted. And yeah, some people just had nowhere to go. They were trapped. Some of them, uh, there was one fire that the only reason people, the only reason people in that town survived is because they went to the lake, and uh, were just sitting in the lake because that was the only way to get away from the fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of fires, did you hear what the governor of Hawaii is telling? the people that own vacation homes in Maui to do? No. Uh, these are rental vacation homes. There's like 3,000 of them. Mm -hmm. And he's urging the owners of that to make them long-term rentals, at least for a little while, so that the people that lost all their homes can have a place to rent, essentially. Okay, I yeah. yeah, I can kind of agree with that, but at the same time, it's still kind of messed up. Well, no, it, it yeah, is it's, messed it's a up. Bunch, it's a bunch of empty vacation homes that they're vacation rentals. They're not even they're not even like people's personal vacation homes. These mm -hmm. are these are these are short term rental properties. Or other people going on vacation, like Airbnb type situations. Yeah, but well, no, I I can get where he's coming from, but it is also messed up. Like, oh, make it a long term rental specifically for the people that are displaced. Sure, I can totally yeah. understand where he's coming from, but it's it's just like, why aren't you doing more for these people yourselves? It, well, that that is doing something for the people. It takes a while. I to said more. Houses. I said I more. <laughs> but basically, you have these people who are now being, you know, kind of, you know, urged by this governor to subsidize his and his government's failure. Yeah. No, I I, I agree. It's fucked up. It should be. It, it should be. Uh, the government pays the difference or something like that. Because the government should not be getting away with just, oh, we're going to do it this, this, we're going to get you guys like, to help us. Let's just completely overlook the fact that you guys completely mismanaged the response, completely bungled the fucking evacuations. We're actively turning people away from safe evacuation routes because nobody knew what the fuck was going on and no one was talking to each other. Mm. <clears throat> there okay. are so many people that died needlessly because the entire evacuation and rescue scheme was just completely fucked. Yep. Oh, and he's even... He's not even talking about vacation homes. He's talking about just, like, units. Like, short-term rental units and, like, apartment building type things. Or, like, townhomes. Yeah. It's not like I said, the fact that he's asking people who don't live in the state to increase the amount that they're paying to help him with a problem that he's responsible for. These people still just need somewhere to live. Man. It's you know, I, I know. Like, I'm just saying, you know, he's, he's the, just asking for 10% of the short term rental properties to be long term for at least a period of time until they can work on rebuilding. 
as so long like, as yeah. he's subsidizing the uh, the costs, or they're the government subsidizing the costs of those rentals, sure, fine, I got no problem with it. Oh, cool! I found my hate symbol. <laughs> what your Kekistan flag? Yeah, <laughs> like oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for some locks to pick, and I'm like, oh, here's a Tupperware. Maybe I'll put them in here. That's not a lock. <laughs> Wait, was it really a Kekistan flag? Yup. <laughs> Man, that's a uh, deep cut. <laughs> forgot I had that. <laughs> back were, in the day were, when it was ex. Back in the day when it was the just I am memes. Kekistan video? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Also, hi, Crab. It's not a serious Sunday. We're just uh, we're thinking about doing it at this time every week now. Yeah. Serious shows will be relegated to Saturdays going forward, I think. Yeah. Or we'll just... Do what we want, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... Considering, you know, like, the lack of ability for, for our European friends to participate in the show as of late, you know, moving it to a different day at an earlier time just seems like a more reasonable thing for the audience. For our friends that we barely have. Yeah, Crab. Bad and you're like... Crab, we'd never... You wouldn't be a mod and we would have banned you if we didn't want you around at all. Yeah, if we never wanted yeah, you we to come back, we would have banned you. you too much. But we also don't want you to be a mod, so... Um... Don't ask. <laughs> well, no, he's already a mod. Oh, he is? Yeah, he's been yeah. a mod. Fuck, who made that decision? Damn, that was a long time ago. You forgotted. <laughs> well, I retroactively say that that was a mistake on our part. I think it was before you were here. Oh, nah, he's so a I'm decent mod. He's, he's just someone we like making fun of. Yeah. Yeah, crap, as long as you're cool with us clowning on you every once in a while. I don't care. A knife. I forgot I have this knife. You know what? That's not my life. It's funny, I actually had two fire-related things that I wanted to talk about today. Mm hmm Uh, that woman that tried to burn down Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home? In Atlanta. You know. Yeah. Did you see that? No. The psycho it bitch who you're, you're racist if you talk out against? What? The psycho bitch Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, she was on the porch pouring gasoline on the porch. I know. I know. And uh, I'm making specific comments that you're not picking up on. Oh. <laughs> Wait, say it, say it again. The psycho bitch who's uh, who uh, you're a racist if you pick uh, if you talk about. <laughs> oh yeah, if we talk about this, we're racist. Yeah, yeah, like everything else, we're racist if we talk about it. I'm okay. Call me racist. I don't care. Fuck you. <laughs> um, it, it's it, it's so diluted at this point. It really doesn't matter to me. Yeah, it it. It's... Yeah, I'm not serious. It's uh, such like, a shame. It's not. It? <laughs> it's not a it's false such a shame statement, that a word that should just mean care. something doesn't anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's on them. Fuck them. But yeah, so yeah, so this lady was on the porch, just pouring gasoline on the porch and the windows and in the bushes and everything. And, like, these two tourists from Utah, we were just like, yeah, let's go. We're in Atlanta. Let's check out Martin Luther King Jr.'s birth home. That's cool. A little historical adventure. Uh, saw her doing this and was like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and it also happened that there were two NYPD police officers that were just there checking out the house themselves. So she got tackled. And they just held her until uh, Atlanta police came. But yeah, there's a video of her pouring gas on everything. 
It's insane. Why? I mean, like, I, I don't want to assume things, but like, are we talking like some crazy white bitch or? Nope. Oh. Yeah. She's not. She wasn't white. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, she's black. Which? Well, considering you know, like if you look at dog, you have lost your tag again. Yeah, I posted the article on live show if you want to pull it up. I'm gonna have um, to find that now. I like the house. It's a cute little house. Nothing wrong with the house. Yeah. I can't find nice. any any of my locks. And yeah, it's, probably... it's unfortunate, but like, um, there's a lot of people now of a uh, certain persuasion who are uh, not very, not very keen on the old doctor anymore. I don't know. This this just has like big hate crime. Blame it on white people written all over it. That, well, that too. But yeah, there's um. There's been an increasing amount of hatred towards uh, Dr. King out of certain communities in the last 10 or so years. Oh, really? Yep. Are they doing the full, like, we should have done what Malcolm X was promoting? Sort of shit? Some of, some of them, yes. They do know that King and Malcolm X are friends, right? So, they had their which is why on approaches, <laughs> but they were, they were friends. Which is why X Men is the way it is. Yeah, between Magneto and Professor X. Yeah. Yeah, the end was some of them. And with some of them, it's because of King's Christianity, which is a um, oh, which is a target for some people these days. Yeah, somebody that was born in the U.S. when Christianity was at its highest was a Christian. Whoopie fucking do. Fuck off. I'm not saying that they're good reasons. I'm just saying that these are reasons that I've seen cited. Yeah. Ooh, somebody that was born at a time when the U.S. government was trying to fight communism with Christianity. Which, was a to be reverend. fair, to be fair, one of those C-words is worse than the other. Let's look at the track <laughs> record. What, cunt? <laughs> <laughs> no, that one's fine. It's always just a greeting, depending on what part of the world you're in. Yeah, Crab, it does make for a strong story, but that's, it's literally based on Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X and the civil rights movement. That's what X-Men is all about. Look at the era it showed up in. Yeah. Yeah. Look at a lot of the slogans that are said when people are yeah, protesting it... the uh, mutants. Look at... if, if you <laughs> if you didn't realize that X Men was born out of civil rights era America, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. That's an excellent allegory for it too. I I, I remember I was part like of the reason why or I remember I was twelve or thirteen. I was watching the animated series, and it was one of those episodes when things are getting really wild with people protesting mutants, and I was like. Wait a second. This is just racism. Okay, yeah. I get what this is about now. <laughs> you know, and it was, um, you know, that's one of the main reasons why, for the longest time, after Spider Man, Marvel's best seller was always X Men. 
I mean, originally their flagship series was Fantastic Four, and Fantastic Four still sold well for a good while, but Spider-Man and X-Men, those became the two major cash cows for Marvel Comics. X-Men's a great it's, you know, diversity of powers. It's like, I dig it. Nowadays, it's mainly just spider man because uh, the x-men brand is not doing so well lately oh yeah because they're doing like all the new mutants and stuff also just bad films i think an underrated x-men animated series was x-men evolutions yeah i like that one all right yeah the ones yeah. when they're all in high school I i'll admit i might have spanked you to road but <laughs> Trust me, I, I was in junior high and high school at that time. <laughs> I'm just saying, you're like, like the, 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 the goth alt girls are kind of my type. Ah, I found my locks. <laughs> Where are you? you know, it'd be nice if you just participated in the show instead of just looking for locks all the time. I'm participating. I'm finding hate symbols. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, if you didn't have a thing for Rogue, you weren't going to be my friend. And then, uh... And Raven was always over Starfire and Teen Titans. Fight me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, too, I can't argue. Starfire's too bubbly. Starfire's fun, but uh, she's eh, in the end. I'd be friends with Starfire. She's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Not my type. I'll say this. She is absolutely um, Robin's girl. I'm not going to fight with that one. I'm not interested in, in, enough in her anyway. Wait, wasn't there a thing between Robin and Raven at one point? Uh, very briefly. But they always kind of set her up with uh, Beast Boy. Yeah. Two weirdos. Except for that whole thing with Terra, which never got resolved, really, because the series ended. Yeah, Teen Titans Go was a mistake. Oh, God. Just keep Ooh. the series going. I, I, Which, I, like, I like fun little quirky animation. Did not like it for Teen Titans. Yeah, you know, like, it, it wasn't even one of those things where it's like, oh, it's like, it's just kind of keep, it's like, it has nothing to do with the series, really. Oh, it's the just live a, action. It's just yeah. a bunch of little vignettes. Yeah. Oh, the live-action Titan show. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, I haven't watched it on purpose. I keep forgetting that it exists on purpose. Um, it's like, can anyone name a single CW superhero property that was worth a fuck? Just one. Uh, hold on. Superhero I liked The Flash. Like... Yeah, I like, like, I like maybe season the one first of the Flash. One or, like, yeah, I, I, say, I th maybe like season one or two. Uh, I like season People one and two like of the season Arrow. one of Arrow. Yeah, that was the other one. Yeah. Arrow, like... Flash, and I mean, Supergirl was okay. That one got old really bad later. Yeah. Batwoman yeah. was fucking hilarious. It wasn't good, but God damn, that was fun. Worth the watch for how about it? Like, it's bad good? Oh my God, it is. That show is fucking hysterical. All right. I might give it a shot. I'm amazed. I amazed it got three seasons, but... Oh my God. I love that. Um, And then they had that crossover event where it was like... Um, they tried to do um, Crisis on Infinite Earths on a CW budget, and it just did not work. It didn't work. 
the Green Arrow Flash crossover event was really cool. Also, I will never forgive that special for the fact that they killed Kevin Conroy in it. Besides that. Uh, I, I just like the Green Arrow and Flash interactions. I liked it. Well, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths thing. Oh, okay. Where they had Kevin Conroy play a evil, homicidal Batman in like a power suit, and then he got killed. It was really bad. I'm, I'm still telling you, Crab. You might want to check this out. The uh, the DC animated movies. Yeah, um, some of them are misses. Some of them are misses, but they got a better track record than the live action ones. At the minimum, they're okay. A lot of them are really good. I was excited about Aquaman too. What to see how much of uh, Amber Heard got cut out? I think like in the trailer they released, she's in it for like three seconds. Yeah, we're just like, I, oh, there's her face, and we're moving on now. Um, I have no faith in DC live action, so I haven't watched any of. I mean, they're not good. Yeah, I know. None of them are. There's the people are like, oh, but well, Dark Wonder Knight Woman. No, Wonder Woman sucked too. Oh, you know what? No, the yeah. original Wonder Woman was decent. The remake was shit. No, no, it, it was it was decent. I'll argue with you on this. I disagree. It was not great, but. It at least had a, a, a much more upbeat story, partly because it was taking place in a fucking time where a lot of the shit that they try, uh, try to pull with more modern stuff with the sexism actually made more sense. I had the same opinion, and then I rewatched that movie. I'm just like, Ooh. Oh, this doesn't hold up as well as I thought it did. Alright, maybe I'll have to watch it again. Also, the fact that Gal Gadot cannot fucking act. She just can't. You know what we should start doing? Uh, Although I will admit, Old Boy is Ares was fucking hilarious at the end of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> then I will destroy you! Like, okay, that's a way to deliver a line. We should, uh, as like a community event for movie nights, we should do, we should do movie roulette. That might not be terrible. Movies that you've only seen like once or twice and it's been a long time since you've seen them and pick it to see if it holds up. Because some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, speaking of movies that hold up, it is the 20th anniversary of Return of the King this year. Jeez, it's that old? Yeah, can it you It still feels that? like it's only five years. That movie came out in 2003. Jeez. And I fucking adore it. I was 10. I'm surprised my parents let me watch that because I saw it in theaters. Yeah, it. I've been thinking it's like <laughs> I need to try and maybe watch the trilogy before the end of the year because it's been a minute since I've sat down and watched them. The extended versions, obviously. Yeah, always the extended versions. It's about, it's I can about see theatrical. I can see the theatrical if you're dealing with a situation where you've got a kid and they're not old enough to watch it. And you've got to watch it in between the f their, their naps and whatnot. 
Now, like, I'm the type where it's like, if I'm going to do it, I'm not compromising. I'm going to set aside a day for it. Oh, yeah. Like I said, uh, I can see that. it. I didn't say I'd do it. <laughs> like, there, there have literally been times where, like, I'll, have, like, either, like, come home or, like, I come out of my room and my dad will have one of them in his hands, like, Wanna watch the trilogy today? Like, fuck yeah, we're watching the trilogy today. Do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I... Yeah, I've done that only, like, two or three times. First time I did it, it was just like, I wonder if I can do this. It was summer. I had nothing going on. Like, all my friends were out of town. And I just... I just told my mom, I was like, Hey, Mom, today I'm going to watch the whole trilogy. I'm going to meet the TV. She's like, all right, cool. And I just set up like this big old mat, just piles of sleeping bags, totally unzipped. Make like a comfy, cushy bed type area. Mm -hmm. Pop a shit ton of popcorn and just started going through it. Yeah. And that Yeah, it's about fourteen and a half hours with the extended edition. Yep. Yeah, EFAP, they're actually um they're releasing their largest EFAP movies to date. It's gonna be nearly eight hours and it's just them watching the entire extended edition trilogy. And providing Jeez. commentary. Yeah, and that's edited down. Fuck. Well, yeah, because obviously you can't include the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I was actually... I actually watched a video yesterday by some guy who um, did a... Like, he does these videos on, you know, like, basically positive um, interpretations of masculinity in media. Mm hmm And uh, he did this video called uh, The Redemptive Masculinity of King Theoden, who is my favorite character from the trilogy. Nice. That was a really good video. Wish I could remember his watch channel name, because I, I recommend his stuff. Does he have a video about Picard? Um, hold on. Because if he doesn't, he's either saving it for when he runs out of other ideas, or he's missing out. I go to my father's, the redemptive masculinity of King Theoden. Master Samwise, that's the channel name. Oh. Yeah, because like earlier he did what he did a thing on like why the ride of the Rohirrim is like the greatest scene in cinematic history. Yeah. That shit was intense. It's so good. It's my favorite scene of the trilogy. And I'm hard pressed to think of a movie scene that I would rank higher than the ride of the Rohirrim. Yeah, when I saw that in theaters, I got hyped. I was like, oh, we're turning this bitch around. Let's fucking go. And he actually, um, he provides more context for that scene in that video that even I didn't think about. Like what? Um, the fact that um, when, and this is getting into like deeper Tolkien lore, when El Luvatar, the uh, creator, the wielder of the flame imperishable, when he created the different races of Arda, when he created man, he gave them the gift of death. Like, elves are bound to the world. They live forever, and they will persist for as long as the world does 
men, however, get to die. Oh, and so all elves have horcruxes. Got it. What happened was is that <laughs> Melkor, later Morgoth, the first Dark Lord, the Great Deceiver, he twisted the perception of death in men's heart. So that men became fearful of death and became envious of those who had immortal life, namely the elves. This is oh, okay. a lot of what led to the fall of Numenor. Yeah, but I got that deep in the lore, bud. <laughs> as they're up there, you know, after at the end of Thaden's speech, he leads all of his men in screaming death. That's the word that they all scream. Yeah. And it's like, you know, the way he talks about it, it's like, you know, not only are they accepting the reality that they very well may not come back from this, but in a way, they are also accepting the gift of their creator. Oh, that's a sweet sentiment. And I'm like, I didn't think about it like that, but that's really fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's mainly got stuff on, um, I don't think he's done anything Star Trek related yet. Then again, he may not be the biggest follower of Star Trek. Yeah, he's got essays on masculinity as a playlist, and it's, uh, Aragon's masculinity, Kratos, Aragorn. God of War, Uncle Iroh, uh, actually this one's interesting, why Iroh is the pinnacle of masculinity. I mean, like, Iroh's pretty be, fucking great. To be fair, I, three of the four videos in this playlist are Lord of the Rings, which totally fits given that he, he is Master Samwise. Gee, I wonder where that, what series that came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen that Iroh video. He's also got this other video called Why Do Men Need Male Heroes, which I've been meaning to watch. Uh, yeah, once you, once you accept that you will die, what else do you have to fear in life? Pain. Dum-dum. It's more to fear than death. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen the... Okay. Yeah, so I've seen his stuff. Yeah, I'm sure I've seen his stuff. Because... Yeah, I've definitely seen at least one of his sh one of his videos because I've I I've got one that has been watched by me. I also like that his channel image is a uh, cross frying pans and a lightsaber. That's funny. Nice. The manliest nerd on YouTube. Sounds like he technically falls into the maniverse, but uh No. In fact, no. um I think I feel like a lot of those people would fucking shit on him. Yeah, they would completely I said technically masculinity. I said technically. Because like especially because um in the most recent video he posted on Theoden as you know like he's um reading passages from the book like you can actually hear him getting emotional mm -hmm. yeah maniverse would shit on him for that like i said like, technically showing emotion is a feminine trait this wailing pussy crying reading a book Ugh. 
Yeah. Yeah, I watched this one pra- on with his praise of Iro. Yeah, the no people people in the manosphere would shit on him just for watching an animated show. I I knew a guy. Uh, we were buds for a while. I worked with him, and I was chilling at his place, and we were just hanging out, drinking some beers. And just scrolling through TV to see if something was on. I was like, oh, cool. South Park's on. He's like, I'm an adult. I don't watch animated stuff. I'm like, have you ever seen South Park, dude? It's not for kids. Yeah. It, I hate the misconception that animation is for kids. It yeah, anime. Anime is for, for kids. No, no. Have you ever seen animes like... Um, suddenly I can't remember its name, but it's one of the best ones. Not, not even Cowboy Bebop. Not even, yeah, not even <laughs> anime though, Rimshi. Just anything that is animated. Period. Yeah. South Park exactly. is for kids because it's they see cartoon, they see, they think kid. People are like that. Like, like my my sister doesn't like anime, but I metal? that one's. <laughs> it's not for kids. Yeah. There's a lot of anime that you uh, couldn't show to children. Have you ever seen no, Bible I'm Black? Not about... <laughs> I not... wasn't talking about hentai. <laughs> God damn it. There's a legit storyline, okay? <laughs> Is it hentai uh... if there's a legit storyline? It's both. <laughs> yes, there is a storyline to Bible Black, but there's also a lot of fucked up porn in it. Yeah. Yeah. Some of, some of it I will never forget and not for good reason. Yeah. Bible Black is one of those shows where there are things that happen in that show. It's like, man, therapy is expensive. I might have to turn to liquor. <laughs> yeah. Jabel saw this scene, that's when he picked up the bottle. That's a lie. No. Has been hotel coming out next month? Coming good. Can't wait. No. Yeah, I've been getting into some of these video essays. Uh, There's one channel called uh, Happy Little Thought Tree. Mm. I think is what it's called. Yeah. I actually tried to get him on the show and he did respond. But he uh, he doesn't want to do live content. He wants to be scripted. Mm. I see. Which is fair. Yep. But it was cool he responded. And he does a lot of, uh, he's a therapist, a professional counselor Mm. from the UK and does a lot of, uh, like psychoanalysis of a bunch of movies and TV show characters. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, Grave of the Fireflies. That's a new one. Uh, I haven't seen it yet. It's not new. It's not new. No. Oh. And um. I, I just know. I just noticed a lot of people saying that they watched it for the first time recently, and so I figured. Yeah, it it's one of those movies that keeps coming back around, but um. Okay. It is deeply depressing. Oh well, I'll avoid that for a little while. I'm going through some shit. Yeah, the, the basic premise is um, uh, a boy and his little sister trying to survive World War II era Japan. Oh, yeah. I'm good. 
I mean, it's a beautiful film. I it's bet a Miyazaki, Ghibli, it's a Miyazaki so. film, but yeah. at the same time, it's just like, yeah, very depressing movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll check it out, maybe in the summertime when I'm in a good mood. What's a hey Rimshi, What's your favorite Studio Ghibli film? Honestly, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's hard to pick. There's actually a new one coming out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw the uh, trailer for it before I watched Godzilla, uh, the Boy and the Heron. And uh, I saw some of the animation in it, and I'm like, that is impressive. I'll have to check out that trailer. But, uh, yeah, like it's that? hard to pick, though. Like, I think Spirited Away and Howl's Moving Castle are two of the, the ones I like the most. Those are both really solid picks. Uh, yeah. I think me is... Yeah. Crab, I think Miyazaki's done, but there's still Studio Ghibli that's going to be. No, um, uh, The Boy and the Heron is a Miyazaki film. Oh. Didn't he say he was that's done after Ponyo? No. Nope. He probably did. <laughs> Doesn't mean and he was the, telling the truth. <laughs> the way the, the way the trailer is spinning it, like, they're calling it basically Miyazaki's magnum opus. Hmm said no idea what it's about really but the visuals i saw from the trailer i'm like god this is fucking gorgeous that'll be fun uh what what were your favorites again rim she sorry i real i i think i'd have to say it's between hell and uh spirited away mm. spirited away is great yeah both are solid picks but like it's it's sometimes it's just hard, <laughs> hard to pick one. I uh. Although and, uh... my sister doesn't like them. Why? But she's she's a pleb. She doesn't like anime. She just like writes it off as a genre. All right. Um. Yeah, Spirited Away is good. Like Howl's Moving Castle. Um. The Wind Rises, I think, is underrated. I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, I'm in the it's same about, boat. The Wind Rises is a Studio Ghibli film based on the Miyazaki manga, based on the creator of the Mitsubishi A6M0. All right. Which was one of the most most feared for a time fighter planes in the Pacific during the Second World War. Okay. There's a lot of plane Ponyo, themes in Miyazaki stuff. Ponyo's interesting. I wasn't a fan. It's a lot fine. Of people bitch. A lot of people bitch about like um, dubs over subs, but as strange as it sounded at the time, I actually kind of enjoy Liam Neeson in that movie. <laughs> yeah, like his very unnatural kind of stilted delivery actually fits the character surprisingly well. Well, or, or it's like a uh, Billy Crystal as Calcifer in Hell's Moving Castle. I love that. Oh, yeah. Billy Crystal was fucking great. Christian Bale's there. <laughs> yeah. He exists. He's all right. Yeah. My, I don't think he would have been my first choice for Hal, but... My introduction to Miyazaki films was... I was at my Japanese friend's house, and he was like, 
I was like, what's that movie? He's like, oh, My Neighbor Totoro? You haven't seen that? Like, no. A so kid came to oh! Halloween this year. Halloween this year, a kid came to our house in a Totoro onesie. That's cute. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. And my wife was it's the a... first person to recognize it as a Totoro onesie, too. Only because no one else watches anime in the neighborhood, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then... I was like, oh, can I borrow this? I want to show it to my sisters. And so I showed it to my sisters. Uh, like, we all loved it, obviously. Because it's a great movie. And Us. then, like, a week later, one of my sister's friends came by. And we were talking about Totoro. And they were like, oh, you know that guy made a bunch of other movies too, right? Have you seen Princess Mononoke? And that was the second Miyazaki film I saw. When I was mm. like seven, I was like, Whoa. <laughs> that one's that was brutal. Yeah, talk about one eighty. Uh, talk about the duality of man. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> like holy <laughs> fuck! There's a lot of blood in this cartoon. Yeah, that uh, yeah, the scene with the boars that are infected creeps me out to this day it uh mm -hmm. yeah and then after that i saw spirited away and that was a lot that was a bit more chill but like... yeah like spirit away still has its <laughs> intense moments but it's not quite to the same degree yeah it's a much better middle ground between the two you watched yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, um. Yeah. There, there, are, there are different things that you can get from Miyazaki films, you know, like. Well, especially because the intro, they have Totoro for the intro, like, title card. Yeah, um, because he was the most recognizable yeah. thing. And then I'm just thrown into Princess Mononoke. And it was, it blew my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I said, I, I'd say watch it at some point, but like, Grave of the Fireflies is one of those movies where if you're already depressed and you watch that movie to completion, it's just like, well, I'm just going to go hang myself in my closet now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I'll that wait till like help. spring or summer. Because <laughs> we're about to get into cloudy, rainy season here. Well, it's uh, it, it was raining this morning, and suddenly I have blue skies I can see. All I want is the fucking rain. Yeah, there's just there's just an overarching. There's just an overarching theme of hopelessness in that film. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a rough set. You, you, you guess the ending pretty soon into it. That's fine. It's about the adventure, not the destination. Everyone has AIDS. Oh, Everybody right. got AIDS oh, wait. and shit. <laughs> oh wait, we're not talking about rent. <laughs> yeah, that was Showgirls. No, but that uh, line comes out of nowhere, and I still have no idea what the context was supposed to be. Everyone has AIDS. It's the ending. No, I'm talking about in Showgirls. Oh, where this guy just railed is like everybody got AIDS and shit. <laughs> it's like I, I think Rimshu is more what? referencing uh, I know, I know. The parody of Rent that's in Team America <laughs> yeah I was yeah. <laughs> AIDS 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 everybody got AIDS <laughs> now there are a lot of people that wish that that theatrical release of Pats was a parody 
Of what? I know my wife does. Oh, Cats? Yeah. Cats is not Release. a parody. Cats is a beautiful person. I'll watch it if they release the butthole edition. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch it then, too. <laughs> not because I, I think it'll be good, but because it just sounds so ridiculous. How could I not? Yeah, I'd have to. I'm sorry. I just can't. I will not subject myself to anything that James Corden is in. He's in a lot more stuff than you think. That's a lot of voice acting. Or at least he did. Yeah. I don't like that guy. Yeah. Nobody likes him. I don't know how he's still around. And it's like, we just need to round up, like, all of the criminally unfunny late night guys and just fire them into the sun where they can't hurt us anymore. Yeah, there's only one late night guy. It's Conan O'Brien. We all know this. Well, and there was Craig Ferguson. But Craig Ferguson doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah, he doesn't count. He's made his money. He retired. He's cool. <laughs> Love you, Craig. The Late Late Show under you is the best. No, I love, I love how Conan just cares about comedians. Like yeah. he'll hire he'll hire a comedian that's hard up for money for like a temporary position on writing staff, and if it works out, he'll hire him on full time, or at least he would. That was a, uh, I thought that was really cool. Yep. It's Conan's daughter. Uh, what movie left you with the biggest what the fuck face? Um. John dies at the end. Okay, I, I feel like we have to quantify that as in like what the fuck as in what the fuck or what the fuck was that yeah like a big twist or like confusion or annoyance confusion got it <laughs> John dies at the end I've read the book seen the movie Still don't know if he dies. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one that. Midsummer. Oh, <laughs> fuck that movie. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's. It's. So fucking dumb and like, why the fuck did I watch? My my wife was watching it and I came in part way through, and by the end of it, I'm like, your problem. Well, no, I I ended up seeing the first part at some point, but I even with that, I'm sitting there going, what the fuck? This this whole the whole premise of this movie makes zero set sense. People celebrated that film. They're like, it's a girl power movie. She murdered her boyfriend. It's a girl power movie. Like, no, this movie is ass. Are you kidding? The dude was gonna break up with her, and then she had, she lost her a member of her family, and so he didn't break up with her because he didn't want to be cruel. And what's his reward? She murders him. Oh, you yeah, know like, what? what? Not just him. It's like, what about all of her friends that came with her? They yeah, she's the die. only one who lives. Crap, I have the answer for your question. It's pretty much any David Lynch film. I'm very confused by a lot of them. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, the last time I saw a movie where I was sitting there like, what the fuck? What? What did I just... 
I I'm trying to remember. I mean, I it was like years and years ago, but fucking Tank Girl kind of confused the fuck out of me the first time I saw it. Nope, I know. I I just thought of it. Like I love the movie, but the first time I watched it, I'm just like, what the fuck just <laughs> happened? Time bandits. Yes. I agree with you on that one. I I had to do I didn't get it till like a third watch. Yeah, like I People love really time like this. Bandits. I have to try to understand this. I adore Time Bandits. But my first time seeing that movie when that ending came, it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. What happened? What what was that? What do you mean that's how it ends? And that's a great reason to show that people to, to people that haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I never heard of Time Bandits. Oh, we're watching Time Bandits. That that's what happened to me. Uh, I moved in with this guy, and I was just like looking through his DVD and Blu-ray collection. And I was like. It's like, oh, you got a lot of interesting movies that I haven't seen before. Uh, I saw Time Bandits, and I love time travel. Um, I was like, what's Time Bandits? He's like, you've never seen Time Bandits? Let's go. <laughs> like, Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah, we, we went to the store, we got some beers, and we watched Time Bandits. And it was the best mistake of your life. No, I was just confused the whole time. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? I'm thinking Rimshi hasn't seen Time Bandits. <laughs> I don't Rimshi, remember if I have or not. Bandits. I don't remember if I have or not. I may have. I don't remember. It's one of the it's one of those movies that you'll always forget and always remember at the same time. <laughs> you remember the emotion of watching it. You don't really remember what happens. <laughs> or is that just me? <sighs> I'm mean, this is a Terry Gilliam film, which if yeah. you know anything about Terry Gilliam should give you some expectations as to what you're getting into. No. Oh anything about anyone with a name. Because Harry Gilliam's next film after Time Bandits was Brazil, which is also a bizarre fucking movie. Yes, it is. Not quite as uplifting as Time Bandits, but... Yeah, those two occupy the same space in my head, understandably. Well, it's considered... Time Bandits is considered part of the trilogy of imagination as Gilliam refers to it that being Time Bandits Brazil and the Adventures of Baron Munchausen I haven't seen that one Munchausen Syndrome <laughs> again it, it's another very strange film Robin Williams is in it do you like Robin Williams I love Robin Williams Anyone who doesn't like Robin Williams is wrong. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to come up with an argument. <laughs> Can't. <laughs> well, no, I was just thinking, like, I, I know a lot of people that don't like his stand up. I'm like, that's fine. But they love his. Yeah. Movie. So. Great actor. Yeah. The Adventures of Baron Munchausen is a 1988 adventure fantasy film co-written and directed by Terry Gilliam, starring John Neville, Sarah Pauly, Eric Idle, Jonathan Price, Oliver Reed, oh. Robin Williams, and Uma Thurman. An international co-production between the United Kingdom, the United States, and Germany, the film is based on the tall tales about the 18th century German nobleman Baron Munchausen and his wartime exploits against the Ottoman Empire. 
So Robin Williams did this movie called World's Greatest Dad. Oh, I uh, have heard of that, and I've been meaning to watch it. All right, I'm not going to spoil it. That is a... Uh, based on the description, that is a fucked up situation that I would normally just pass by, but it's Robin Williams, so I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting movie. I don't doubt it. You know exactly what it's about? I know the, uh, the description on, I think, Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then there, like, there are some other films, like, um, like, there, speaking of Robin Williams, um, uh, Bicentennial Man. I don't really care for that movie. Yeah. So that's not Robin Williams' fault. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Then you had um, AI, that Steven Spielberg movie. Which mm -hmm. I still... I don't like that movie either. I don't know what happened to Haley Joel Osment, but it's like his head kept growing, but his face didn't. <laughs> and he just. <laughs> he becomes like the caricature of Billy Mitchell on fucking. Um, oh, God, what the fuck? Regular show. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. It was like you could kind of start to see it in Secondhand Lions. And then when he got older, you're just like, dude, your face is too small for your head. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that he was in The Boys. Yeah, I, I just looked him up. It's like, Oh, God. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about now? I first Facial saw his final... Facial does not help. No. does help. Well, it actually does help a little bit. I've seen him without facial hair as an adult. The facial hair helps. He gained a lot of weight. Yeah, that's fine. He doesn't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, his his face is kind of comically small. Yeah. I don't know why nobody talks about it. I bring it up to other people, and they say they didn't notice it, and then they look, and they have the same reaction you just did. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Uh... That kind of makes me uncomfortable. I'm going to stop looking at that now. Yeah, go for it. I get it. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, Macaulay Culkin, since Christmas is coming up, might as well talk about him. He looks pretty good now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he I was looks, say, looking like... really bad for a minute. <laughs> but he turned it around. Didn't he marry a Disney uh, child actress? I don't know. I don't remember. He might have dated one for a while. I think they have a kid together. Yeah, Brenda Song. That's who I was thinking of. Oh, I had a crush on her when I was a kid. Who in their right mind didn't hanging out with my Japanese friend watching all these Japanese movies and cartoons and shit started to gain a little fetish I like the Asians I have no comment mm -hmm. I'm yep, married I'm so I have no favorite. preferences anymore <laughs> just type it out she'll never see it 
She's not home. Oh, okay. Just She's at work. Never hear no, 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 no. These <laughs> things have a way of getting back to the wife. I'm not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm looking up some of the people that are supposedly watching us. I'm checking out their channels. Two of them are just rat ASMR. Mm -hmm. And it's just an an animated rat eating chocolate. <laughs> Fucking weird. It's basically the same channel. Just trying to get money. <laughs> Gay! Hey! <laughs> oh, this yeah, one Graham, looks... That's why, that's why I'm not going to get married, because I could just keep getting away with everything. This one looks... What the fuck? They're shits in Cyrillic, but uh, their their name is in fucking Japanese or some shit. <laughs> okay. Does it have boxes, circles, or is it swoopy? It's definitely Japanese. Okay. I actually took a couple of years of Japanese, so I didn't learn any of it. But I, I, I learned what the uh, fucking what it looks like I learned what it looks like so I could recognize it yeah and even within Japanese there's uh, katakana hirikana or something like that there's like three different versions one of which is literally just Chinese right uh, Chinese letters that were that don't mean the same thing mm. they're used in it to replace words Yeah, like Mandarin and Cantonese are real boxy. Japanese is real swoopy, and Korean has circles. I know that. Yeah, Japanese has three different uh, three different things. It's hiragana, uh, katakana, katakana and, and kanji. kanji. Those are just different ways of writing. They're all the same. <laughs> it's all sp it, the the spoken language is one single language. It's just yeah. different methods of writing. Well, Which is fucked that's up. why Japanese <laughs> is kind of the it's kind of hard to get into because it's like it's like yeah, just because you could speak Japanese doesn't mean you can read it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're planning on reading it there's things that you're not going to be able to read if you don't know how to read all three of them. Yeah, which is why you just get really good at speaking because the locals will help you out with the reading. If you're really good yeah, at speaking. That's like, um, there's a Razor Fist. He's done, like, um, work in other countries like mm -hmm. volunteer work and shit and he's been to japan before and somebody was asking him about you know like you know visiting japan and he's like you know learn the language just get started on that now because if you actually want to go anywhere in japan you're gonna to have to know how to speak it because outside of the little like tourist areas nobody is going to talk english to you Yeah. Yeah. At least learn in. Uh, you don't have to be fully conversational, but learn enough to get to where you need to go. And the thing is, like a lot of people kind of give up on it, but they have to realize you know, like the barrier is much worse the other way around. Mm -hmm. 
Because if you did not grow up with it, if you were not in a place where it's just completely pervasive, English is a ass backwards fucked up language to try to have to learn. Yeah. Yeah, well, but also... uh, I'd rather try and learn English than try and learn Mandarin or Cantonese. Well, it, Tonal it languages like... are just that much harder. The problem that people have with English, if you're a non-English speaker trying to learn English, is that in a lot of other languages, it's like everything kind of tends to have like a specific word related to it. With English, yeah. words can mean different things. Also, our our sentence structure is kind of fluid, whereas other languages have very specific sentence structure. Yeah, we have which very is why, specific sentences. Which is why sentence... a lot of a lot of people that learn English sort of say things backwards. Is uh... yeah. Well, we we do have a very specific sentence structure and all that. The difference is that we have very specific exceptions that are way more common, and so the rules aren't always the rules. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what makes it difficult. Yeah. Like, I, I look at the basics of other languages, and I'm like, this seems really easy to start <laughs> seems very hard progressive for me because of how English works yeah I'll agree with that yeah I, it's pretty straightforward in that this means this it will always mean this as opposed to in the US where well, it could mean this, it could mean that. You never know. Yeah. What's with all this shit? Or the... The word buffalo is actually a great example. This is a proper sentence. Buffalo, 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 buffalo. That is a proper English sentence. It's fucking dumb. Because Buffalo has like three or four different meanings. Mm -hmm. it means to bully. There's an animal. There's a city. And uh, a I think it has. Yeah. And there's a sauce. Hello. Although in the terms of the animal, buffalo is just kind of a common term. In actuality, they're called bison. Yeah. But they're also called buffalo. And there are two a kinds beefalo. of bison. There's the plains bison which most people know about out in like the Yellowstone area and the plains, obviously. And then there's the wood bison, which is larger than the plains bison and tends to live more northwards. Actually, buff the uh, buffalo are an African species. The buffalo, uh, the bison buffalo you're talking about is bison. It is a separate species. I know. Like it get, so it gets even more complicated than it has to be. Welcome right, to English. We just moved in and started calling them buffalo. Yeah. Well, yep. buffalo aren't exclusive to Africa either. They're Asiatic buffalo. Yeah, so. yeah, they're Asiatic bear. You know, like you have the water buffalo. Africa's got like the Cape buffalo, which you don't want to fuck with those things. Those are some very angry murder cows. I think we've hit our buffalo limit. <laughs> We're buffaloed yeah. out. I'm not exactly big on the sauce, if I'm being honest. It's fine. Hey, cats! Thanks for the biddies. Hey. Cats, we were talking about you earlier. 
Not directly, but yeah. Oh, I mentioned her directly. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I zoned out. Yeah, we were talking about how 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 bad Katz was. And I said, that's a lie. She's a very nice lady. And I said, no, she's an absolute meanie head. And, uh... <laughs> that's just because you want to see her tits. <laughs> Still haven't seen them. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be a continual problem for you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I never support her. I support her in... <laughs> I support her in her efforts to, to stymie you. Doesn't hurt to ask. That's all I'm saying. We were talking about Cats the Musical Cats. Specifically the theatrical <laughs> release. Yeah. Oh, that makes me smile. <laughs> now show them no. <laughs> I was checking. I was check I was checking I was checking scores. And yeah, the Bills are kicking the shit out of the Cowboys right now. Nice. Uh, that makes uh, me smile. Yeah, the musical Cats. Uh, I'll only watch it if they release the Butthole Edition. So. <laughs> Holtz won today. Lions won last night. <laughs> well, Holtz won last night. And Lions won last night. And now the Cowboys oh. are losing. This is a great week. Good for the Lions. Oh, yeah. they If they beat the Vikings next week, which, considering how dog shit the Vikings have been the last few weeks, they win the division easily. Nice. Because the Packers lost today as well. And I think the Bears won. They beat the Browns, which is good for the Colts, not so good for the Browns. Anywho, Cats, what do you think about our new time? We're at the end of it now, but... Yeah. I want some European input. We didn't entirely do this for you, but, you know, partially. <laughs> We've been meaning to do it for you. Yeah. It's entirely for you, Cass. You know. Okay, now you, you gotta get this fucking. We gotta get Jables is bitties. just being creepy. Jables is just gotta, being creepy. We you have can to ignore get those him. three biddies. <laughs> Will Twitch shut us down if I say the S word? What? Which one? Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it for the biddies, not the titties. Yeah, See, it's midnight right there right now, Jables. If we were to start at noon, it would be 11 right now. Well, actually, yeah, it, it'd be 11 right. Well, we, we started an hour and a half ago. It would have been. It, <laughs> it been... would be 1030. They'd be able to go to bed at a reasonable time. Yeah. I mean, not Barr. He doesn't have a reasonable time in his in his life. No, he's just a week. Barr's just like, what is sleep? What is this sleep that you speak of? <laughs> yeah. I know only programming and caffeine. Yeah, I see him online all the fucking time. Does he just take like little 20 minute naps constantly like Tesla? I mean, it's not far off, I don't think. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what Nikola Tesla used to do. He would he would work for a couple hours, take like a 20, 30 minute nap. And then he'd work for a couple more hours and then take like 20, 30 minute nap. Because fuck your, your uh, yeah. channel points.
I mean, like, I'm not saying they, I'm not saying anything that Bar hasn't said himself. Like, the man has literally admitted, it's like, yeah, without coffee, I basically don't function. Yeah. Just try to wean off that a little bit. I mean, he's in reasonable health, I guess. That's he I'm did have that judging. scare not that long ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he also doesn't sleep. So... Sleep's kind of important. Prime time for stroke. I've gained back too much weight. I feel so bad. Well, cats, you missed all the good stuff. Yeah, we, we talked about things. Conversations were had. Oh. Did you hear about the guy that a few years ago wanted us to plant, like, one trillion trees? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Now he regrets then, it. Yeah, now he regrets it because people are just planting trees and they're not worrying about carbon emissions, which is what he really was cared about. <laughs> I planted so plant a tree, trees, I did enough. We don't enough. have to worry about carbon emissions. Cats, we already talked about people trying to burn down Martin Luther King Jr.'s house. Um, we did our movie talk. You're, you're an hour and a half late for the show. And if you're the good stuff, Jables wants you to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. No, but you were thinking it. Uh, can't prove it. <laughs> no such thing as thought crime. No, no, thought crime exists and you're guilty. I don't live in the UK. <laughs> Still exists. Yeah, it's getting bad there, and it's getting bad in Canada. <laughs> I'll too. show Dina, not Jables. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's been the ongoing bit. Dina gets to see, I don't. Dina reports back, they're nice. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah. Everyone gets a view but you. And me. But I'm not the one asking. <laughs> I wasn't even asking. You're the one that brought it up. What's your point? You're the one that brings it up. I don't ask anymore. I haven't asked for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you just bring it up all the time. When you bring it up, of course I have to do the bit of playing showing them titties. <laughs> but other than that... Like... Well, I've right. got half-inch hardware, so fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's been the show, everybody. Yep. That's and turn your notifications on. <laughs> You can be here for the whole thing next time. Yeah, we end on boobs. Boobs are... Why wouldn't we end on boobs? Boobs are amazing. Yeah. Anyone who says otherwise stuff. is wrong. You know what? That is a very good point. Next week is Christmas. So we're probably not doing next week at all. But... Fuck, what day is Christmas this year? Yeah, next week is Christmas Eve. Yeah, I won't be able to do anything next week. I won't either. And I'm then the be, week after, the week after, parents. yeah, the week after is New Year's Day, or New Year's Eve. 
Yeah, that's fine. So we may not have a show for two weeks. We may have a show on New Year's Eve. Uh, uh, well, what I won't be there in New the Year's early Eve. afternoon. What? Oh, yeah. Maybe New Year's Eve will be there. That's yeah, one thirty p.m. Plenty of time to go out and do shenanigans. Yeah, like the, all the fun shit doesn't start until like 10 on New Year's anyway. Eh, it depends on the neighborhood. Around here it starts at like 6. Because <laughs> people want to do every time zone, so they drink until 9 and then they count down for the East Coast. Uh, and then you just do a countdown every hour. But yeah. All right. Have a good night, everybody. See have a good in night. Two weeks. Have a good night, everyone. All right. Oh, bye. Later. Bye.